Grow My Cleaning Company teaches owners of cleaning companies just like you how to grow your company, make more money, and finally take charge of your financial future and your life. This podcast is about automating and creating systems that give you time and money freedom so you can grow like crazy without losing control. Since this is totally free, if you're getting tons of value, want to support us and make sure that you get more of the good stuff, subscribe, rate, and review to this podcast today. Now, on to the show. So excited to have you. We have, oh my gosh, we've already got comments, Dark, Derek, Dark, Dedrick, Arthon, uh, Nicole Marie from Denver says uh, Colorado's construction cleaners are standing by. All very excited. Today we have uh, my uh, friend, client, all around decent human being, Alyssa, on the call. Uh, I always love showing off uh, our Clean Profit program rock stars that are just fun people and have had success so we can uh, share how cool they are. So Alyssa, take a second, introduce yourself, give a shout out. What's shaking, baby? Um... I'm Alyssa. I own Gulf Coast Professional Cleaning. I opened it in 2016. Going to give a shout out to all my family and friends if you're out there watching me. What's up? What's up? <laughs> well, we got D- Diane Jean says hello from Pennsylvania, but I don't think uh, she's friends or family. Lori Culver from Flip Flop Cleaners in Florida. I like Flip Flop. I don't know what that means, but I I think I like it from Florida. I'm b- digging it. All right. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt your fantastic shout out. Just wanted to give a shout out to everyone else. So go ahead, young lady. Nah, it's all cool. Um, just hanging out, living my life in St. Petersburg, Florida, sweating to death. You know, it's like 80 degrees already. <laughs> I wonder if there, if you were like in the 60s or 70s. I'm not sure what it is out there, but we got blue skies, baby. Uh, say, well, Lori apparently is in Florida, flip flop cleaner. So we got a couple in the same state. Um, Right. And how old are you? I think you told me, but we got to know just how young this, how young and ridiculous you are. Well, I'm 26. All right. I thought you were younger than that. 26 isn't as shocking as I, I know hope. my face. You know what I mean? I always get mistaken for my younger sister. She's 21. So. And anyone on the, uh, on the live deal here, feel free to text. If does Alyssa look like a young Axl Rose or is that just me <laughs> being crazy? I was watching a video of uh, like Welcome to the Jungle or something from 1990s, so way before Alyssa's even born, probably. <laughs> and I'm like, that's Alyssa <laughs> singing like a rock. Oh, wait, that's Echo Road. So let me know if I'm crazy. Uh, hey, Joe Lou is on. I think Joe Lou is our most uh, dedicated Facebook Live person. I love having that guy on. All right. So let's, enough nonsense. Let's talk about you, sister. Um, I always like going way back. So before we met, there, I'm assuming there's some sort of problem in your business, something you're unhappy with, some sort of frustration. Take us back. Oh, man. So before I called you, I mean, a lot of stuff was going on. I felt like I was kind of stuck in like a plateau. Like I wasn't really moving forward. I was dealing with hiring people that would stay for like a week or two and then quit or like just not show up or you know, disrespect me. And it was just all getting to be like way too much, you know? So I was like, I need help. And honestly, when I started my business, I did a lot of research and your company came up, grow my cleaning company. And I watched a lot of your podcasts and creeped on you a little, but I was like, you know, worried that you were some kind of like con artist out there to steal my money. (laughs) Well, Hey, the the day is young. I still might be, you don't know. (laughs) Right. <laughs> All right. But so anyways, you, were, yeah. <laughs> you did a plateau. You kind of started looking online, starting to kind of absorb different things, podcasts. You're always, and again, that well, I want to talk about that before we go forward. Um, and hello, Mary Ogles in the house. Uh, love that lady. And Karen Coy rightfully says a better looking uh, Axel Rose. That's that's implied. Clearly, young <laughs> Alyssa is better looking than uh, than Axel Rose. Um, and then Diane says what Karen said. All right, so we've got a lot of uh, fans of Alyssa. Apparently, you're hot. I, I hadn't known, but here we are. This, the, the cleaning nation has spoken. <laughs> right. I mean, there's only so much of me to go around, so let you know, let's take it easy. <laughs> I feel your pain, baby. We we only got so much to listen, so everyone just uh, everyone just calm down for two seconds here. <laughs> All right, so you were frustrated and started going online, and there is absolutely that fear. Uh, hey, Jennifer from Delaware, nice to see you in, in the in the in the broadcast here. There's always that fear, whether it's me or anybody else, that it's a scam or someone's just trying to get your money. How did you get over that, or how did you get through that, or how did you work your way through it? Basically, I Google stalked you and read everything that I could about you. <laughs> 
before I hopped on to our consultation because I already had it in my mind that I wanted to work with you but before the consultation. So I just wanted to see like if we clicked, you know, but I figured we would because, you know, you just you have a nice personality, you're cool, fun, yes. you know. <laughs> I tell you, you look like 90s rock stars. Who would like that? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, all right. And he hello, Colin from New York City. Beautiful. All right. So you started doing a lot of research online. And first of all, that's a big thing. I, I don't want people to miss that taking action because I talked to a lot of folks. And I think the biggest distinction of people that are successful versus not the successful people are kind of have built up to that point of not one more day. I can't live like this. I've got to change. Something's got to go. And they actually take action. I love that about you, Alyssa, is that you as you built, you're kind of like, instead of just a lot of people just like, well, I guess I'm stuck. I guess this is how it is. I'll just see how it happens or I'll just keep stumbling around. I love that you got proactive about it and, um, and started taking action, doing some research. So what was the last straw? Where, where did you hit rock bottom and where you actually made that decision of God bless America. I'm not going to put up with this anymore. Well, it was probably after my last employee just decided, well, I'm just not coming to work anymore. You know, good luck. I got another job. And then I was stuck trying to like keep up with all the work myself. And I was just like, man, if I do this, I'm going to die. You know, I was working, like cleaning so much, you know, being so exhausted, wasn't being able to keep up with the business side of my business. So it was just like a complete disaster. So I was like, you know what? New year, new me. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Perfect. So for you, it was employee leaving you getting back in the field and just going, I can't, this isn't, I didn't get into this business to clean. I got in this business to be an entrepreneur and own a cleaning business, not be a cleaning business. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, and did you try anything else that worked or didn't work or gave value? I always want to make sure we kind of distill all the value you've gotten in your journey for uh, everyone listening. Anything else you tried that worked or didn't work that had good or bad results? Man, I tried all kinds of crazy things, you know. Give me the best kind of, and the worst. Give me the best thing you tried and the worst thing. Well, I don't know if I'm allowed to call them out like that. They might be like, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, the worst, don't name names. I don't want to, we're not trying okay, to. Okay, the worst, let's just say it was some sort of advertising dollars for me and got me no results. And I Wait, was like. You, you, totally, you totally broke up on my end. I don't know if your internet went bad or if it's just me. What did you repeat the last five, ten seconds? Oh, I was just saying, I started working with this advertising company, not going to name names, but um, they took like over a thousand dollars from me and I didn't get any new leads or any new clients. And so it was just like, unfortunately, every mistake that you make in business costs you money. <laughs> You know what? I, that has been my experience. So two things. First, uh, Maria says it's too late in the UK bedtime. Come on, Maria. Look at Alyssa. We are worth staying up for. And Miranda says, hey, Alyssa. Uh, oh, with a big blue heart. I don't know what the blue heart signifies, but you got to come in your way. So that's my sister. Oh, is that your sister? Okay. Hello, Miranda. <laughs> <Mr. Marks>. Um, <laughs> so uh, yes, the, for, one thing I want to say is, and again, I'm glad we don't have to bring up the name of whoever the advertising company was, and it probably wasn't them, I guess, and I don't know, wasn't that they tried to scam you out of money. They probably did their best. They just didn't know what they're doing. So a lot of times there's a couple issues that can come in. One, we get people that don't know our business and just like, I know advertising, I know Facebook, I know direct mail, and they don't really know who your customer is, what their pain is, what they care about, anything that's important, and they just do their best. And then two, we kind of just want to run away and be like, I'll pay this person to get me leads or this company to get me leads. And when they don't, because it's a hard freaking job, we blame them. And yeah. I appreciate Alyssa. Obviously it was frustrating to lose that money or to waste it, but to take charge and say, I've got to own this. I've got to know this. And so many people come to me with, I know how to clean. I know how to do low level stuff, schedule and buy supplies and all nonsense. And that's fine. But we can hire that out for 30 or $40,000 a year. Getting clients, certainly in a systematized way and getting the right clients and, and bringing them to us pre-framed in a way that's healthy, right? If a client comes to us, like when you came to me, you'd already known me, you did the research, you came to me in a very healthy way. I'm like, I need help and I was able to help you. Um, but that ability to bring the right clients to you in the right frame of mind is one of the more valuable things you can do for your company. So I love that you were willing to say, hey, how do I figure this out? How do I do it? And either do it yourself or at least know enough that you can manage a company to do it for you properly as opposed to just, I tried a thousand bucks, I got screwed and I quit. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's, oh, that was what worked the worst. What worked the best prior to us getting together? Anything you did that worked out well or you, you want to, and definitely if it worked out well, feel free to share, share any details you want. Oh yeah, here we go. My beautiful personality. You know, hassling people until it gave me work. <laughs> I don't know if I would recommend doing that, but 
man, I, when I wanted this one contract, I literally went in and it's like, Hey, how's it going? Like would bring them food or something every now and then, you know, I'm still out here, still willing to take over the contract. Just let me know when. <laughs> and uh, how long do you think you doing that to get a result? Um, well, they gave me part of the contract pretty quickly. And then, uh, probably was like a couple months later, they were just like, all right, just do it. <laughs> and I got to tell you, you know, methods that I think are a little more sophisticated and scalable than that. But that just hard work of, by golly, I want it. And I'm going to go in and, and ask for it and tell them I can make their life better. That's a I love that attitude of, I'm just going to go get it. I'm going to get some. And that attitude, even when, when you get better strategies, works fantastic. So if you're kind of like, everyone's blaming, I don't know, I can't do it. No, if there's always excuses, then we give you the the better tools, you can just make excuses not to use those tools. But when you've got that attitude of I'll go do it and you're doing the things that are really hard and still having results because you've you got a bad system, once you put a good system into place, holy crap, can you really fly big and bold? Verna Carroll says, hello, beautiful cleaning family. A lot of beauty. I, I think it's you. There's not a lot of beautiful and good looking on the phone. It's just me. It's when I get the I got to get more good looking girls on here. I got to get my wife back on here. All right. So, um, what was the first thing that I asked you to do that made the biggest difference? Cause I want to make sure that people listening can kind of take the things that are working and, and implement them on there. So what's the biggest thing that maybe you're afraid to do uh, or you weren't afraid, but you did it anyway and you got big results. Well, you know, I hated when you asked me to uh, cold call people or maybe like go into person to see like kind of what pains they were facing, what kind of like issues they were dealing with. So then I could figure out a way to solve them. And I don't know. I guess I was kind of stuck in this mentality that I needed to be some kind of corporate drone and dress all fancy, you know, when I went into places and talked to people. But you told me that the best thing I can do is just be myself. And so it was a little uncomfortable for me at first. But, you know, I did see a lot of results from just going in and being like, hey, what's up? You know, like, can I have a few minutes of your time? Just want to figure out what's going on, you know, in your facility, whatever. You know, how can I help you out? <laughs> For sure, that really knowing who you are and what your core values are and being able to articulate them and live your company by them is huge. And people are attracted to what's real over what's professional every time. So I love that you were willing to kind of take the coaching and find out how to be real in a way that was effective or, or live your core values. Because I promise you, if you went in and try to be fake, you're just going to maybe you get the job, but they fire you. You don't like them. You hate them. They hate you. It's a mess. So um <laughs> All right. What other what other big things did you do that got values that you can share with the group in terms of this works? Uh, I was afraid, but I tried it. Give give us the, the big highlights of kind of the big changes you made and, and how awesome your company's doing. Oh, man. When you told me how to like systematize my hiring process, I was like, woo, you know, because I went from like having, you know, a few applications here and there. But then I was like, I had to like hassle them, like chase after them. Like, are you coming to the interview? Where are you at? Are you coming? Let's just get <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and so it was just getting like so ridiculous. Um, but then once I kind of had it more streamlined, I had like a ridiculous amount of applications. But the good thing is I didn't have to like read them all, you know, because that's a waste of time. Um, and then the first interview that I had, it was just like, it was kind of intimidating because there was like 10, 15 people there. So it's like, I'm giving like a presentation, like, Hey, how's it going? Everybody like trying to remember everybody's name. I got them the right name tags because I was like, this is overwhelming. <laughs> we should have had you video that. You would love, I promise you once you're big and bad and have tons of employees, you would love to see that video of your first group interview. I might have people start inter uh, videoing their first interview just for posterity. Right. You would have seen me there. I'd have been like shaking a little, like, Hello, everybody. Eat my eat these donuts I brought and <laughs> don't pay any attention to how freaking nervous I am. <laughs> I, I would love to see that because I bet you came off. I bet you, you knew you were nervous, but I, I'm guessing other people didn't. Um, and Kat Queensberry is in the house. I'm guessing that's mom. Is that mom? Who we got? No, that's my sister, too. Another sister? Oh, my God. How many sisters you got out there? I got a whole squad. You, know? <laughs> you can't mess with the Quisenberry family because we're out here. I would, uh, I would never dream of it. I, I'm just not, uh, I'm not man enough to try to take on that clan. Um, and th that's another thing I want to encourage you on is I love the, um, a, the coach ability to just do it and B, you're absolutely right. When you have a system as opposed to trying to sift through 40, 50, 60, hundred applicants, that sucks. And even the positioning when, before you're talking about how you got to call them, are you showing up? Are you coming? That's a, t even if you hire them, you've almost, 
polluted them before anything can happen because you taught them, hey, this is the relationship we're going to have. If I want you to show up, I call you and I beg and I plead. And are you coming? Are you in? That's uh, not good as opposed to the way you've got it now. You had 15, 20 people coming to you. You didn't call any of them. It was all automated. They're, they're all looking left and right going, holy crap, this must be an amazing job. That's many people want in. Did, did you feel that change and vibe or am I making it up? No, for sure. Like people were super excited to be there. They're like, oh, if I could tell from your emails, like this is going to be super awesome. You know, I could already liked you from, you know, reading the emails and, you know, I don't know. I just want people when they work with me, like I want them to feel like we're family, you know, just people that I can really get along with. You know, that's why we have you had me set up the core values. And I think the ones that I chose really reflect who I am as a person. And so it really helped me select, you know, employees that fit in with who I am instead of having employees that are just like, Ugh, you know, <laughs> that shift from your employees being necessary evil that it's like I have to have if I want to grow, but they make me crazy to human beings you actually like hanging out with and you're looking forward to spending time with is massive. It changes everything. So, yeah, tell us a little bit about the culture of your company. Uh, what do you want to know? My core values. Well, you just tell what's the vibe if I was going to show up at one of these group interviews and try and get hired, what would it, what would it feel like? Why, why, why would I come? Right. There's a, a ton of $12 an hour crappy jobs or 10, whatever you pay. Why is your place special? Why does everyone want to show? Oh, cause I'm the best. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I like to have fun. Like I don't like to be real serious. I like us all to have fun. I like us to be able to, you know, communicate openly. I'm always open to ideas and stuff. Like I want to feel like, you know, I'm out here trying to help you get the best out of life, you know, and that's all. It's, um, as my company grows, you know, you can grow with me. You know what I mean? I just I just really care about my employees. You know what I mean? So, like, that's why you would want to work for me, because I'm nice. You know, I, I got a lot of love in my heart. So <laughs> and we have fun, you know, but I mean. That is as long as we're getting the job done. I mean, of course, I don't want you dilly dallying all day because I'll be like, come on, you know, that's not making it happen. One of my core values, but. <laughs> and knowing you and getting to know you over the last couple of months, that is so you. What you just said is like, yes, it's a thousand percent Alyssa. And that's super attractive. Um, I, I know that's the right people, the wrong people are going to go, oh, that I don't want any part of that. That sounds terrible, which is fine. You don't want them in your organization, but the right people are going to be like, oh, that's what I've been looking for. This is the kind of opportunity I've been. So I, I love, love, love. That was so, for those of you who don't know, Alyssa, that was her, the way she just was the last minute. So Alyssa, all right, we've got a question and two questions. One, I think for me and one for you. So I'll answer the question and I'll give, I'll give one for you. Verna says, so are you saying not to do that? Not to call them and ask where they are? No. Um, that is a great way to beg and set the relationship that we beg and plead and please come, please come. You want to create a system where the right people, you've got so many right people coming. We have no time to deal with the wrong people that are knuckleheads and going to be late. If they can't get there on their own day one before you're paying them, forget it. You have no chance of taking someone that can't deal with life and making them responsible. So no, 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 we do not call them. Um, we just work on impre improving our funnel. So we've got so many of the right people coming. We're just not even worried. Okay. Uh, Jennifer says, how long did it take you to go from worker to owner? Uh, I'm assuming that is for the lovely Lissa. So what do you got? Ooh, worker to owner. Well, I mean, it's all just like a process with anything you have your ups and downs. So even when I was in the program, you know, I lost a bigger contract. Honestly, it was for the best. So I'm like, see you later. You know, I'm on the bigger and better things, but I think um, there's, you know, in business, it is kind of like up and down, but I mean, you just got to keep getting back up and keep going for it. And so like right now I still do some cleaning, but definitely on the move to get back out of cleaning. So I would say my goal is to get out in what month is it now? <laughs> We're going to call it March. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I, my brain's all over the place right now. I'm going to Pennsylvania next week. I'm just like, whoo, you know, um, anyway. So in the next couple months, I want to be back out of cleaning because, you know, it's, I'm not here to clean. I'm here to grow my business. and. Well, Let's get the details on. Okay. So first of all, Kim says, Kim in the house. I'm so excited to have you sister. Uh, she's actually literally in the house. I hope we, uh, I think, uh, Kim, I think Natalie is at the house. So I don't know. We, we've got our first millionaire mastermind group, uh, that's happening. So yeah, Kim, well, not, I'm at my house. Natalie's over there. Uh, I stayed here to talk to you. I don't want to, I don't want to try and do it from a different house without the internet. Anyway, all that to say, uh, Kim is, uh, in, 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 in town, maybe in our house. So when, how long have you been in business? When did you start? Like two years ago? Uh, no, in 2016. So um, 
my dad and I always talked a lot about me starting my own business. So I was like always really hype about that. And then, you know, he passed away. And then after that, it was kind of like a driving force, you know, like following in my dad's footsteps because he was an entrepreneur too. So I was like, you know, I'm going to get out here and do it. Let's go. <laughs> cool. So you mid 2016 and you started off doing all the cleaning yourself, right? Yeah. Okay. And what percentage of the cleaning would you say? Well, obviously now there's well, how many employees do you have and what percentage of cleaning you do versus the employees? I do a lot of the cleaning still myself, not going to lie. Please now, don't. <laughs> out of here pretending like I'm a big successful millionaire and stuff. No, I have two employees, you know, one of them doesn't clean, you know, she just does a uh, virtual assistant work for me. So I guess she's not really an employee, like subcontractor or whatever, but then, you know, somebody that helps me clean from time to time, but um, still really looking to grow the business, you know, cause obviously it's my main source of income. So I want to make sure I'm living the life, you know, comfortably. <laughs> yeah. We, and hopefully at least you've got, I didn't, I, yeah, I thought you had more employees. So hopefully at least you've got the system in place now where you're getting, you're doing your group interviews. You've got plenty of people showing up. You've got flow of employees to hire. Yeah, for sure. No, I mean, I was in that position, but you know, once I lost that contract, I had to like, let some people go. Got so it. it was kind of sucky, but is what it is. We're going to get back up there. <laughs> well, again, the big thing is we've got systems that you're going to grow because obviously we're going to pick up contracts and that doesn't mean we're rich and famous and we're going to lose contract. So the big thing is that you're, we've got a steady increasing in systems and increasing our ability to scale, which yeah. you've got. So and you said you're going to Pennsylvania next week. Yep going to freeze up there, but here we go. Very exciting that your company will continue to uh, exist and make money while you are not uh, out I there. Mean, that is like the most awesome thing about owning a business. It's just like, oh, when I'm out of town, I still have money coming in. You know what I mean? But it, if you're working like a nine to five or whatever, you leave work, you're not making money unless you're getting paid vacation. But what is that like one week out of the year? <laughs> yeah. And even then you got to ask, can I go? Yeah. One week, two weeks, as opposed to I come and go as I please. All right. Yeah. Uh, give us, I'm going to let you end it up. I feel like we've given a lot. What's the biggest word of wisdom you can give to the group? Um, you just got to realize that you're capable of more than what you might be telling yourself that you are. I you love know? it. <laughs> fantastic. All right. Uh, that is fantastic. I feel like we've done some good stuff. Um, we will be back on Tuesday. I think we do it a little earlier for our UK folks on Tuesday. Thanks everybody for joining us. Alyssa's awesome. Uh, oh, by the way, I, I, I guess if you would like me to help you walk through your business, look at what's working, what's not working, help you put uh, together a plan to get you where you want to go, you can go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk um, and sign up for a complimentary breakthrough session with me. Uh, well, like I said, I'm doing my millionaire mastermind event today and tomorrow and Sunday. So I don't think there's gonna be any appointments until Monday or Tuesday. And I think we've already got half of them taken. So if you're interested, go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk sooner than later, uh, in that there are going to be limited spots. Alyssa, you're awesome. Cleaning nation, love and appreciate getting to ser serve you. We will talk to you next week. Oh, actually Natalie posted the growingcleaningcompany.com forward slash talk. Broken. What's, oh, is <laughs> <laughs> and I, oh, I, I should tell you, I think so. Usually, we broadcast Tuesdays and Thursdays. We might do a special bonus episode. Uh, we'll have a bunch of my millionaire mastermind folks in the same room, like the lovely Kim and Jason Johnson. So, we might do a bonus broadcast uh, tomorrow or Saturday. So, we'll have to, you'll have to keep in touch. We'll let you know if that's going to happen. Uh, if not, we'll see you Tuesday. Have a great day, Cleaning Nation. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for the love. Uh, Dedrick says, Great call. Appreciate you, brother. Talk soon. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. If you're fired up, ready to grow, and want to see if you have what it takes to work with us at Grow My Cleaning Company, here's what I want you to do right now. Go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk. That's growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk to book an appointment to speak with me personally. I'm going to jump on the phone with you to get you crystal clear on where you are now, where you want to be, and how to get you there. Don't walk around in the dark any longer. If you are serious about growing your cleaning company, it's time to finally get the systems in place that you need to grow. We've helped hundreds of owners of cleaning companies not only grow their business and their personal freedom, but give back to their community as well. If that's what you're looking for, head over to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk and book a time to talk with me personally. I can't wait to get to know you and your business.